and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two Swedes who really love 19th cent uh, 20th century design. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, we have another way of counting in Swedish actually. We have. So, yeah. uh, but this time we're going to talk about an iconic Swedish textile artist, Marta Mås Fjetteström. And perhaps you heard about her or at least seen some of her amazing carpets signed MMF. And we understand that her name can be quite hard to pronounce uh, if you're not uh, speaking Swedish. Well, it's hard in Swedish too. Uh, yeah. So let's repeat it again. It's not a common name. No. <laughs> Märta Mås Fjetterström. And from now on, we will simply call her Märta. And normally we, we prefer to use the last name of people we're uh, mm. talking about, but we will do an exception in this time. <laughs> yeah, it would be hard to say Fjetteström. All the time. All the time. <laughs> Märta Mås Fjetteström. Mm. Märta was born on the 21st of June 1873. So she's earlier than most of the people we talk about. Uh, yeah. As the second daughter of the priest Rudolf Fjetteström and his wife Livia. In the following years, the family kept growing and Märta would come to get seven siblings. Her father was a serious and sometimes almost frightening figure who devoted all of his life to his religious calling. His wife Livia, on the other hand, was quite the opposite of her husband. She played and sang with the children, loved nature and was often found in the large garden. Märta wasn't fond of having so many siblings, so she often kept a distance to the rest of the family. The large family lived in a rectory close to Vadstena, a small community mostly known for its, for its old monastery founded by Saint Birgitta already in the 14th century. Märta wanted to become an artist, but her father didn't approve of this. Mm. That's something that... Keeps coming, coming up. when we read yeah, about yeah. the childhood. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the parents artists. didn't approve no. of uh, someone wanting to be an mm, artist mm. or an architect or something. Almost no. never. No. Instead, she moved to Stockholm in, the, in 1890 to study at the technical school to become an art teacher. Mm. After graduating, she worked as an art teacher for a short while, but the desire to become an artist was always present. Yeah. And in the late 19th century, there was a strong will in the Swedish society to revive the traditional textile art, and that was a part of the dominating national romantic aesthetic. And Märta was inspired by this and understood that by working with textiles, it was possible for her to fulfill her dream to become an artist. And soon she started creating uh, figurative uh, textile patterns and sending them to uh, different manufacturers and organizations. And two examples of motifs she did during this time uh, was Snövit and Bebådelsen. Uh, with time she uh, proceeds to create more geometrical patterns inspired by nature, for example Hesthagen, Blommande träd, and Örtagården. During these years, Märta exhibited her textiles at different exhibitions. At one exhibition in 1914, the Swedish entrepreneur Ludwig Nobel, nephew of Alfred Nobel, who instituted the Nobel Prize, bought one of her carpets. And this was the start of an important collaboration. He came to buy many more carpets and textiles, but even more importantly, he came up with the idea of starting a weaving workshop in the small community Båsta on the Swedish west coast. Nobel had invested a lot in tourism in Båsta, building hotels and cottages where the rich urban population could spend their summers. This meant a lot of rich customers willing to spend money on Märta's quite expensive textiles. Huh? 1919, she moved to Bosta, bought a house combining workshop and home. And the business flourished and soon she had to move to a larger workshop. In the following years, she continued exhibiting her carpets at different exhibitions. For example, the Paris World's Fair in 1925, 
where she exhibited carpets inspired by nature also, like hyacinter and kungsljus. Ingeborg Wernbugge, Sweden's first female architect, visited the workshop in the early 1930s and wrote about the experience to a friend. And I'm going to read this uh, quote now. <laughs> you have translated it. I have quote, translated right? it to English, so yeah. I hope it's uh, correct. <laughs> we passed through the yarn storage, where the shelves were filled with different colored yarn bundles, mostly English wool, processed in Sweden. It's carefully selected, only the best wool is good enough. Then we came into the workshop, where around 20 skilled women worked at the looms. It wasn't any ordinary small looms, they were huge machines that needed uh, at least two women side by side to operate. Bam, 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 the heavy beaters were being hit by two pairs of hands. Swedish weaving is highly appreciated nowadays, Miss Mosfjetterström told me. And therefore, it's time to pause for a moment and be critical. Take new initiatives. Otherwise, we soon get into a rut. But the carpet must always be of high quality. But quality is not the same thing as being, being as expensive. It has to do with manner. However, the rug is often mistreated. It has to be care uh, fully mastered when it comes to color and shape. And modern car uh, woven carpets should always be large. When small, they seem unfinished. In 1934, she exhibited her works at Liljevalk's Art Gallery in Sweden, together with furniture designer Carl Malmsten, among others. The furniture by Malmsten looked great together with Matta's textiles, and Malmsten soon started selling her carpets in his store in Stockholm. For many years, the two would come to collaborate, and her carpets was often seen in interiors designed by him, and the Malmsten store would come to be the biggest retailers of Marta's uh, textiles. And the 1930s was a great time for Marta and her workshop, but this would come to a sudden end because of the Second World War. Mm. Uh, when uh, Sweden didn't take part in the war, but suddenly people didn't spend money on expensive textiles anymore. And it was difficult for Marta to even pay her employees, and she got somewhat depressed during this time, feeling lonely in Båsta. And this made her move to Stockholm, the Swedish capital, where many of her friends lived. But she did her best to keep the production going in the workshop, producing more simple carpets possible to sell in the wartime economy. But the war was a hard blow, not just for the workshop, but also for Marta herself. She couldn't satisfy her need for uh, creativity and was uh, prevented to travel abroad to get new inspiration. Mm. And around the same time she was diagnosed with cancer. And sadly she never recovered. On Easter Sunday 1941 she died just 68 years old and leaving a workshop in economic decay. Marta wasn't married and she wasn't close with any of her siblings, so after her death they burned most of her belongings. And soon the workshop was intended to be sold to a foreign company only interested in getting hold of the copyrights of her works and patterns. The workshop in Båsta was about to be closed and the production moved to the US. When Karl Malmsten heard this news, he was shocked. Immediately he started collecting money to buy the workshop and together with the chief curator at the Swedish National Museum he managed to collect enough money to save the workshop in Bosta. And in the fall of 41 a new public company was started, ABMMF, and the production was restarted early mm -hmm. the next year. Yeah, and it, it is interesting to note that all carpets produced during the lifetime of Marta is signed MMF, and carpets produced after her death are signed ABMMF, ABMMF, and AB is like incorporated in Swedish. Mm. Um, and this is an easy way of telling their age. And the old carpets produced when Marta herself supervised the production is highly sought after by collectors and are often costly at auction. Mm. Um, if a carpet was designed by someone else but Marta, it signed both ABMMF and with the initials of the artist. And one example is Barbro Nilsson. Her carpets are signed BN and ABMMF. 
And still today, uh, Marta's classic patterns are being produced in Båsta. Mm. And we will uh, take a look at some of the carpets being produced today. Yeah, and this was uh, our video about uh, Marta Mås Fjetteström. Mm. Hope you liked it. Yeah, and if you did, please mm. click thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, and follow us on Instagram. Mm. We are called Scandinavian Design 101 and we have daily posts. You should. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks.